Good evening. Good evening. We pray your day has been absolutely wonderful. We pray you go on and get your Bibles. Get whatever you're going to write with or type with. Come on, get you a front row seat while we come together to break the word of life. We want to welcome you into the live stream sanctuary for Berean Family Worship Center. I'm Dr. Joycelyn Purnell Henderson. I'm Pastor Walter Henderson III. And uh, we're just absolutely delighted uh, to have you come and join us in group study tonight. Amen. I want to also uh, let you know that if you have not downloaded the notes for this evening, you can do so right now. You can go to our website, BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org. And under the inspirational corner, right there, you'll be able to get the study notes. That way you can follow along with us in just a few minutes as we uh, break the word of life uh, together tonight for our Wednesday group study. I'm going to go directly into the word of God. I want to pray uh, Psalms 20. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Version tonight. And this is a prayer of victory over the enemies. And this is David praying. And uh, when you see he talks about uh, him, you can put your name in there because I've already today early put my name in there. Amen. And so again, Psalms 20 verses 1 through 9 and the Amplified Version. May the Lord answer you, David. And you can put your name. May the Lord answer me, Joycelyn, mm -hmm. in the day of trouble. May the Lord, the name of the God of Jacob, set you securely on high and defend you in battle. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. May he send you help from the sanctuary. Praise God. That is his dwelling place. Mm -hmm. And support and strengthen you from Zion. Mm -hmm. May he remember all your meal offerings mm -hmm. and accept your bird offering. Mm -hmm. Salah. Mm -hmm. That means just go on pause and think about it. Yes. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. This ought to encourage you tonight because mm -hmm. it, it really encouraged me. We will sing joyously over your victory. Mm -hmm. And the name of our God will be set up. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Mm -hmm. May the Lord fulfill all of your petitions. Praise and it's a lot of them I got out there. Praise Amen. God. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. And he will. Come on here, somebody. Mm -hmm. He will answer Praise him. God. He will answer her mm -hmm. from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Praise Hallelujah. God. Some trust in chariots, mm -hmm. some in horses, but we will remember and trust in the name of the Lord our God. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Praise God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stood upright. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, save the King David. Mm -hmm. Go. David was talking to him. Mm -hmm. You put your name in it. Say, Praise oh Lord, mm -hmm. save me, Joycelyn. Yes. May the Lord Jehovah mm -hmm. answer me, answer you mm -hmm. in the day we call. Praise Glory God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank that is Lord. a good word yeah, to me is. tonight. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And we go back to that verse, and I want to pray that verse, mm -hmm. one verse back to the Lord in this, and that is that Psalms 20, verse 7, mm -hmm. and it simply says, Some trust in horses, mm -hmm. some trust in chariots, mm -hmm. but we, you and I, Praise we God. will remember Hallelujah. the name of our God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you thank tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And we welcome you, Father God, into this live stream mm -hmm. broadcast. We welcome also Jesus the Christ, mm -hmm. and also we welcome... Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you are welcome here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise and we God. invite you in. Bless Your you, presence Lord. is Hallelujah. here. Glory Hallelujah. To God. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We do, Lord. We Hallelujah. Declare tonight 
that you are our God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise you God. are Jehovah God yes, tonight. You are God. We Hallelujah. don't trust in horses, Mm-mm. nor do we trust in chariots. Hallelujah. But we trust in the name of our God. We do. God. We do Hallelujah. declare tonight that you are a way maker. Yes. Hallelujah. Promise keepers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Light in the darkness. Yes, you Hallelujah. are. Hallelujah. The word of God said that's just who you are. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You are El Shaddai. Yes. Glory Praise to God. God. All sufficient. Mm-hmm. Everything we need, we find it in you. We do, God. Hallelujah. Not in a man, Mm-mm. not in a horse, Mm-mm. not in a chariot, Mm-mm. not in our education, mm-hmm. not where we live, mm-hmm. not in the color of our skin, Mm-mm. not in the things that we can do and accomplish. Mm-hmm. We trust in you. Yes, we God. find our hope in you tonight. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Jireh. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You are our provider tonight. Yes, you are, are Jehovah Nissi. Mm-hmm. You are our banner. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah M. Mm-hmm. You are our sanctifier. Mm-hmm. You sanctified us. Hallelujah. You set us apart Thank for you, your use. And help us not to be entangled with the yoke of bondage anymore. Help us not to get into affairs that don't concern us Mm -hmm. and concerning the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And we bless you and we give you praise. We do. You are Jehovah Shammah. Yeah. Right now. You are present. Hallelujah. And God, I write today that you are I am. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I am for every situation that we find ourselves in. So whatever you need, Mm -hmm. whatever I need tonight, Mm I am just showed up tonight. Hallelujah. He's here. He's here to meet our every need. He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. Yes. He's here to set the captive free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah tonight. Glory and we come to magnify mm-hmm. a great God. Great in all your works. Thank you, Lord. Great in all your ways. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Praise and so we shall bust you tonight. We do. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We raise the standard upon you tonight. Glory Hallelujah. To and we say you are high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your train. Fills the temple mm-hmm. of our hearts tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We Lord. cry holy. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy is the Lord God. And we worship you. Hallelujah. And we give you a great praise tonight. Yes, God. And we say, who is like our God? Mm-hmm. And we know nobody. Nobody, God. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight. Yes. And we give you praise. Glory to God. We give you admiration. Yes. And exaltation. Hallelujah. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord we God. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Glory to God is on you, Pastor. All right. Praise God. Good thank evening you, to each of you. Jesus. Praise God. And we're oh, continuing a series that we started on the last time entitled The Nature of Fear. We oui. The Nature of Fear. And this is the second lesson. And this lesson oh, is entitled Faith or Fear. And we have to choose. Praise God. Yes. Faith or Fear. Our scripture text for tonight is Romans the 8th chapter. Oh. Thank you, Beginning at verse 1, we'll read through 2. Praise God. Romans, the 8th chapter. I'm reading the King James Version. <clears throat> reading verse 1 and through 2. Glory to God. There is therefore now no condemnation Come on here. to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ yes. Jesus Come on. has made me free. free. From the law of sin and death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord. As we gather, Lord, as we come around your word. Oh, Holy God, Spirit, you are God. the master teacher. Yes, you are, Lord God. Teach. Instruct us. And Hallelujah. Teach us. Praise Lord. God. Beyond just words that I will yes, speak. Yes, thank you, Lord. Or God. Sister Henderson would speak. Yes. But Lord, what the Holy Ghost would speak. Speak, Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, so that we may know truth. And that truth makes us free. Yes, in God. Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let me just open with a statement, and then we'll just go right on into, praise God, the lesson for the night. Now, I want you to know, uh, when you look at the scripture again, looking back at the scripture, the Bible said there's therefore now no condemnation. Yes. Condemnation simply means that when a person has been judged and found guilty, then they are condemned. And when they are condemned, there's usually a sentence that is carried out. All right? 
So condemnation, there's that there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the key word they're in Christ Jesus. The Lord God. And walk well, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now notice this for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So here Paul talks about two different laws. And he talks about the, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And then he talks about the law of sin and death. Every decision you and I make comes under one of those laws. One of them is for life and one of them is for death. It's so interesting. The scripture says that death and life is in the yes. power of the tongue. So our words also fall into that category as well. We're either speaking uh, words that will align with the law of life in Christ Jesus, or we're speaking words that will align with the law of sin and death. And so the Lord has already told us, praise God, that we will be given account for every word we speak, praise mm -hmm. God. So words are that important, and God wants us to understand that, and that's very important, praise God. Now, in my statement, a law is an order or a rule established by authority. The law through Moses was a body of principles and precepts that expressed the divine will of the God here. That's very, very important. Moses gave laws that expressed the divine will of the Father. We have to see God's word as his will. Yeah, come on. This is what God wants to see happen. When he tells us to do something, these are not suggestions. Yes, Amen. come on. He said, this is my will. This will bring you into the thing I have for you. This will make you successful. This will bless you. This will bless your body. It will bless your life. All right? And let's continue now. In particular, uh, let me read that again. The law through Moses was a body of principle and precept that expressed the divine will of the Godhead, in particular for the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. In the same sense, there is a moral law that is established in the heart of every human being, much like the Ten Commandments. That's good. Romans 2 and 15 says, which showed the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So God put his moral law in every being. And he did that whether you have the Bible or not. That's why we call it conscience. Yes. And now we know that conscience can be defiled. That is because of the fact that we live in a, a, a defiled world. We make defiled decisions. And it brings us to a place that our conscience gets so bad that we're no longer sensitive to the moral law. Now, the word of God is based upon the moral law. Now, all of this is very important to what I want to show you about these two laws. All right. So. God put the, written, the uh, law, moral law, in our heart. That's why people know it's wrong to murder, whether you tell yeah, them or not. Yeah. You can go to tribes that never heard, read the Bible, heard anything, but they know it's wrong to murder. That's because that law has been written in our hearts. And so that now what the Holy Spirit does is work with our conscience. He works with that law, if you will. Now, this is very, very important. Let me continue. The law of faith, Romans 3.27, where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith yeah, now this yeah, is very yeah, important yeah. that there is a law of faith praise god now so the law of faith is a law with principles according to paul faith is a rule established by authority according to paul faith has properties which indicate a principle or precept that expresses the divine will of mankind Having faith in this law will determine our success or failure in receiving the blessing that Jesus died to provide for all. So there is a law of faith now, and which means it has principles to it. It has precepts to it, and it is revealing the will of God for you and for me in our life for the kingdom of God. And so this is very important. We usually don't think about that. It's just if I believe it, it, it's not like that. We need to understand there is a law, there's principle, there's precepts to faith. Mm -hmm. And understanding that is very important for us getting our needs met by the Lord. All right? That's good. So now, with that, I want to launch right into our lesson now. Praise God. Roman number one, for every principle of truth and spiritual force, there is a reciprocal. Mm. Now, you, if you're following along with the notes, that reciprocal is something that corresponds to something else. But is reversed Come on. or inverted. Come on. Inversely related or proportional. Opposite 
expressing mutual relationship. Now, what I simply mean by that is that these reciprocals really function the same way. But one function in one direction, whereas the other thing function in the other direction. Now, this is very, very important to understand it because a lot of time we have been used to under the fall of operating in fear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you understand? But the same principle, watch this, that will operate fear will also operate faith, mm -hmm. but in a, 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 a totally different way, which we're going to get a different result. Now, really worry is the same as meditating on God's word. We are meditating on something and, and that it, we hope don't happen. Faith is we meditate on something that we hope will happen. So there are uh, reciprocals, and, and this is going to be very important. Now, this is going to get, as we go along, going to get really good, help us to understand this faith. So now, under examples, if you're looking at your north and south. Now, north is a direction, amen? And so north will take you one direction. Oh, yeah. South will take you the other direction. Mm -hmm. Amen. In other words, they're similar, but they will take you to different places. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then you have up and down. So up is one direction. Down is the other direction. If you're going up, you can't be going down. <laughs> if you're going down, you can't be going up. If you're going north, you can't be going south. So All right. right. <laughs> now, they work the same way, but they are take you to different directions. And then finally, right and wrong. You can't be right and wrong. You're either right or you're wrong. Sorry. It's just that simple. You know, there's no debate. There's no new fun. And sometimes we try to defend our wrong. And in the end, I was wrong. And it's good to say, look, I was just wrong. And, and, and that's the bottom line. Praise God. And so that's the truth. And God will work with the truth. Mm -hmm. Satan works with lies. Yes, come on. And he's the father. of. He's the inspiration of lies. So whenever I'm lying, you know, I pray we're not. But whenever I'm lying... <laughs> There's an inspiration coming from Satan from that, all right? Because he's the father of lies. All right, let's go on to the next one now. I don't care how far you go north, the moment you turn <laughs> in the opposite direction, you're going south. Yeah, come on here. Yeah. Because they are reciprocal. You will instantly get an opposite result. Yes, yeah, thank you. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, Lord. I don't care how far you're going north, the, the moment you turn south, you're going south. <laughs> Oh, and you Jesus. cannot get to the destination yes. that you were going when you went north. Praise God. When we find out we're going wrong, say, turn around, turn around, turn around. Because we know we can't get where we're going if we're going the wrong direction. All right? Well, I don't care how far you go up. As soon as you go down, you're going in an opposite direction. <laughs> it, are, you, are we understanding that? Yes, sir. Praise God. I don't care how long you were right. When you do something wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> Is that all right? Now, they're reciprocals. They work in the same way. But they'll take you to different directions. Yes, Praise yes. God. All right. Now, let's get the example of Peter walking on the water. Sister Henson, would you read that for me? Matthew, the 14th chapter, verse 25 through 31. And we're going to be reading from the King James Version. Praise God. All right. Matthew 14. Yes. yes. Go right ahead. What was, the, and what was the verse? 25 through 31, I believe. All right. Matthew 14, reading verse 25 through 31, King James Version. Mm -hmm. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Praise God. But straightway... Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. So he's speaking to the fear. He's saying that Jesus wants to halt it in his place right there. They don't realize it, but this fear, again, they operate in a law there. And so Jesus said, that's why Jesus said, don't be afraid or fear not. He, he wants to halt that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou... Bid me come unto to thee on the water. Mm -hmm. And he said, Come. Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when he saw the wind boisterous, mm -hmm. he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Mm. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said unto him, O thou of little faith, All right. wherefore didst thou doubt? 
Mm -hmm. Praise God. Very good. Thank you so much. Now, let's kind of examine this a little bit. First of all, Peter asked Jesus to bid him to come. The word bid there is the Greek word kaliuo, and it means command me to come. Really? He was just saying, Lord, uh, let me come. <laughs> that word is very, very important. He said, command me. Because if you give a command, I know. <laughs> yes, sir. From, come on now. Praise God. So he said, command me to come to you on the water. Now, we know that Jesus said, come. In other words, Jesus was given a command. Yes, Praise God. All right. So Peter walked on the water. Now, he wasn't just walking on the water, but he was walking on it. He asked, so I can come to you, Jesus. And so he's now heading toward Jesus. The scripture said when he saw. Yeah, come on. Peter changed his focus from Jesus to his surroundings. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. He changed his focus. His, his focus was on Jesus. And as he had a word from the Lord, what God had said, he's now walking in that area. And he's walking toward Jesus. He's focusing on Jesus. But he saw. He began to look at his surroundings. He began to look at his situation. He began to look at what was going on with his body. He began to look on what was going on with his family. Yes, he began yes, to look on, on what was going on with his job. Come on. And he took his focus off of Jesus and what Jesus had said. Jesus hadn't changed his word. The word had not changed. All right? So watch this now. Now, so immediately the scripture said, <laughs> isn't that something? It's like you're going north and soon you turn south immediately is oh taking God. you a different direction. Hallelujah. Now I want us to get this tonight. He, as long as his focus was on the Lord, he was moving toward the Lord. Yeah, come he on was here. moving toward what he had asked God to do. <laughs> He's moving toward it. But he stopped and he began to look at his surrounding and immediately, immediately, the reciprocal effect, he began to sing. See, that's the reciprocal long as you're going north and that's where your uh, destination is, you're fine. But as soon as you turn around to go south, your the place you're going, the effect you were looking for has just changed. Yeah, yeah. So this is very important. This is why Jesus talked about in James about us doing what? Wavering. Wavering. He, he, amen? He, he said if you're wavering, don't think you're going to get anything. You can't go back and forth. Because that's like a person who got two minds on the same mm -hmm. subject. That's all right. So, and Jesus is not being mean. What he's saying, when you waver, you're not in faith. You you have changed your reciprocal. You have changed the effect that you're going to get. And so you can't be in and out. You can't be in and out. You and I have to make a decision based upon the command, yes. based upon the the word of God. Now, this is the laws of faith. This law works this way. Praise God. And it's all predicated on what God has done through Jesus Christ on the cross. How Jesus has died and, and, and paid the full price for us. And we're now children of God. And now we have God's word, God's Holy Spirit. And God wants to work this through us. All right. So this is what we see. Peter's problem was not lacking any faith, but lacking enough faith. Can I make a comment? You most certainly can. Before we get too far down, mm -hmm. when you uh, and actually I was going to talk about the scripture out of James, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about it because I think that it, you know when Peter, when God bid him to come, mm -hmm. when he was walking toward the Lord, mm -hmm. had faith in what God had said do, mm -hmm. then he was not sinking. That's right. But because he took his eyes off of, in this case, the prize being mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. he began to then the same thing that would happen to us. But let me read James 1. Okay. And it, it, it goes in, and I think, matter of fact, just for time's sake, I'm going to do verse 3. Okay. Knowing, my brother counted all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Come on. worketh patience. Mm -hmm. And so... There's going to be a trying of our faith. Mm -hmm. There was a trying of, 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 of his faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes we don't want our faith to be tried. But mm -hmm. in order for us to have the rest of this, mm -hmm. we our faith got to be tried. Absolutely. The next verse said, uh, trying of your faith, work of patience. But let patience have her perfect work. Mm -hmm. Let patience be complete in us, mm -hmm. that we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Praise God. The reason we continue to want something, mm -hmm. uh, want more and more and more, is because we haven't let the, 
the, the work be complete in us yet. Absolutely. And then it gets to that verse 5 that you mm -hmm. quoted. Mm -hmm. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give it to all men, liberty and upright or not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. Wavering says that I believe I'll get it today. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to get it this evening. Mm -hmm. it, we, we got another mind. It's two minds mm -hmm. on the same situation. Absolutely. And we know anything with two heads mm -hmm. talking to us mm -hmm. or talking through us mm -hmm. or talking at us. It, it's something wrong with that. Absolutely. And so it's two minds on the same situation and we cannot have it at the same time. Mm -hmm. He says, again, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, nothing for he wavered. that wavered is just like Peter, mm -hmm. is like a wave of the sea, mm -hmm. driven with the wind, and tossed to and fro. That's what is happening, I believe. Again, I talk about the church. Mm -hmm. you know, today we got faith to believe this thing. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, because of circumstances, because safer at home, we mm -hmm. ain't got faith. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, Yo, come. Mm -hmm. The same thing he bid him to do mm -hmm. is the same thing he's bidding us to do. Mm -hmm. And if we come into his presence, absolutely, then we'll find everything that it is that we stand in need of. Very, that is really good. And the thing of it is, is that what gave Peter initial faith to come was Jesus had given him a word. That's right. Get a word on it. You, you, and so you <laughs> got to find out what the word is. Yeah. And, and that's what you have to keep before you. Now, it doesn't mean that sometimes something happens, our mind will come and begin to wonder. We immediately have to arrest that thought. That's right, arrest it, it. Because Satan is coming for the word say. And so a lot of thoughts that we said before are not going to be your own thoughts. It is Satan trying to get you and I mm -hmm. to doubt it. Amen? And yeah. we'll talk about that in it's a few good. minutes. Praise God. So it's not that the thoughts won't come, but you and I have to cast down mm -hmm. imagination. Every image that's contrary to what that thought was has to be cast down. And then keep our focus on Jesus. Amen? Good. All right. So l let's continue. So notice what Jesus said in 31. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Now that's, at wherefore did thou doubt? See, and so Jesus, I mean, Peter had faith. It was just a little. It was not enough. And so many times before we go do something or sometime before we just make a confession, says we need to get into the word. Build our faith. That's good. Amen. And and you're going to ask God for something. You know already how you're struggling with it. Get into the word. Spend some time, some time in prayer, some time studying, some time just meditating on that word so that you can fill your heart with faith. And then even after you've done that, you have to continue to be in that word. Continue that because Satan is coming because situation, you know, the water may get, you know, boisterous, yeah, you know, and on. so and so things look like, my God, this is the opposite of this. And so I got to stay with that word. Praise God. Now, with that being said, uh, let's continue. We have to begin to understand Jesus asked, wherefore? Now, in fact, in, Susan, if you go, oh, wait a minute, I, I got it right here. Let me go back and read this. 31. Now, listen, this, this is very key. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Watch this now. Wherefore? Did thou doubt? We. All right. Wherefore did thou doubt? Now it's very interesting because that word "wherefore" is the Greek word "eis." In what it, this word means, at what point, or it means what caused you to doubt? Mm -hmm. Now Jesus knew what it was. Yes, come on. But he's trying to get him that something happened, and what point did you start to doubt? Because, see, in other words, if we don't discern what brought the doubt and address it and deal with it. Satan will keep using the same thing same over and over thing. again, over and over again. And so when Jesus said, wherefore, that word Greek word ice means at what point? Well, you know, a thought came in my head. I look at that water and I'd be, okay, then you have needed to address that thought immediately yeah. uh, so that that will not get a hold of you. Amen. Satan comes and that faith is going to be tested and Satan will be the one to test it. But watch this. You and I must discern what's feeding your faith. Wee. Is it Jesus the word come or your own efforts. My, my, my. So you understand. Peter was with me. I, I can't walk on water because now he got to that. Look, you couldn't walk on water before. Yes, come on. Whether the water was boisterous or as calm <laughs> as a, a glass, you couldn't walk on it either way. And so you, and whatever we do, we do it by faith based on what God has said. Yes. Praise God. Not yes. our own effort. And so what's feeding our faith? Because whatever's feeding your faith is going to determine your belief. 
You, that's why we can't keep turning to places and hearing things that is distract our faith. You know, uh, it's very interesting. I, I saw the thing on my phone not too long ago, and it's called screen time. And especially if you have an iPhone, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming this is probably the other one. Screen time tells you how long you've been on your phone doing some things. You know, whether it's on the Internet, whether it's on FaceTime, whether it's on Twitter, or, you know, whatever. And if you are not, if I was, would be amazed, some of us, if we go look how much time we've been on the phone. Because if I've been on there a lot of time, that is still feeding my faith. And it depends on what I'm feeding my faith, whether my faith is strong or robbing. I can read my word and then read something else that's deluding my faith. Yeah, come on here. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so whether it's on phone, whether it's on television, whether it's on telephone, we need to understand, I need to understand in my ear gate, I got to be cautious what's going in because it can rob my faith. We talked about that just a couple of weeks ago when we talked about Psalms 1, amen? Because, you know, evil association can corrupt, yeah, corrupt good manners. And so what, what's happening, whatever I'm, whoever I'm giving my ear to, allowing them to put stuff in my ear can affect my faith. I want us to understand the, this law of faith is, is major for us to understand what God wants to do. While, and, and will it help us affecting whether we're doing faith or whether we're doing fear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go on. Praise God. You know, Pastor, yes. a little poison will kill you just as much as a big piece of poison. It will. It, yeah. Sometimes we think we can just get it, we can get it off just a little bit, mm -hmm. and we're still okay. Mm -hmm. No, we got to come back to what the Word of God says. Otherwise, you know, we continue to drift. It's almost like we started here, mm -hmm. and we we look, and all of a sudden we're way over somewhere else. And then we ask ourselves, how did I get over there? Absolutely. We got off of what God's Word said. And that's how people will come to a place they don't believe the Word of God anymore. Right. I've allowed some feeding to go into right. me where that was contrary to what God has declared about the pick a subject. And now I don't know if I believe that anymore. Well, right. you have to understand, I allow, uh, even if I get a lip poison that don't kill me, it can make me sick. Yes, sir. It can still make me sick. And so I need to understand that whenever something comes contrary to the word of God, I, I, I got to get rid of that because that will create a thought that has a potential of a future. And I don't want that future in my life. So I need to get rid of that. All right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, now let's go to Roman number two. The reciprocal of faith is fear. Fear, fear is not a feeling, nor is it an emotion. It can be in effect even when you don't feel it. That's good. Because sometimes the way we react to certain things is because of fear we have inside of us. And somebody said, well, why are you acting like that? What's wrong with you? That's all right. Just leave me alone. But, see, I'm not diagnosing it. I'm not dealing with it. But maybe something has happened in my past that has caused me to resist it. Or when you say a certain word or you do a certain thing, it causes me to think a certain And so that fear will cause me to react. I didn't feel anything. But it has so deep-seated in my belief system now that it causes me to react. So feeling doesn't, I mean, uh, fear doesn't mean you're always going to feel it. All right? The fear is a spirit. Fear is spiritual and a force like faith. Wow. Think about that. We, we read last time, God has not given us a spirit yeah, yeah. of fear. All right? So spirit, uh, fear will work like faith. Faith, but in a give me a reverse or an adverse effect, and I must be very careful about it. Uh, this spirit of, of fear is something else, and you and I have to recognize it, we have to diagnose it, we have to deal with it, or it will control our life. Uh, Roman number three Satan twisted the truth of God's word into a lie in order to bring about the reciprocal of God kind of life. Mm -mm -mm. Intended for mankind. Genesis 3, 1 through 8. We didn't want to go through that and read it. I'm just referencing that. Now remember, we're dealing with the law of life in Christ Jesus or the law of sin and death. Now, Adam and Eve were living in the law of life. In their, but it wasn't in Christ Jesus, but it's still the law of life. Now we are able to come through Christ Jesus to get to that law. That's the only law God had. It's the law of life. It is meant to live. It means to live the God kind of life. It means to have the Zoe of God. It means to have the health and wellness. It's all of those things. Yes, thank you, But Lord. Satan knew if he could just twist God's word, that he can get Adam and Eve, watch this, to go into the law of sin and death. Now, in that, now he could dominate the earth. The earth will become his. There's some stuff you got that Satan wants. 
And so therefore, he's going to twist God's word to get your stuff, to get you, praise God, to get me. Amen. Praise God. He don't care. And so you and I, again, got to be very cautious in our ear. See, she, Eve should have got Satan out of her ear immediately. Yes, when he said something contrary to God's word, she said, we're done. It's mm -hmm. over. Get out of my face. Adam, come on, handle this. You know what I'm saying? But see, we'll let people put stuff in us, and we don't recognize it before long. Our own feelings are changing. One of the greatest things God wants to give you and me is the spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. we got to be able to discern what is right and wrong. And what gives us that discernment is what God has said. God's word and the Holy Ghost will call that word back to remembrance yes, within us. Yes. Praise God. See, and so it's going to be very, very important that we understand it. You Go know, ahead. Pastor, we've mm -hmm. talked about this before, mm -hmm. but that to me has got to be key for every one of us tonight. Mm -hmm. That if we don't know the word, then we don't have a spirit of discernment. That's right. We cannot discern God's word unless we know what mm -hmm. God's word is. Mm -hmm. And so often we're trying to discern based on what we can see physically with our natural eyesight. We can't do God's word is 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 spiritual. Mm -hmm. We can, we can't discern. We this this God's so big. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna to, to try to figure God out? Please. Based on where how much intellect and how much college you got. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. But because we don't know the word, mm -hmm. we we then fall back on what is familiar with mm -hmm. us. And that is, whatever it is that we've learned or experienced, we fall back on that. And God tonight wants us to fall back on Him. Absolutely. Because His Word is the only truth. Mm -hmm. No matter who else says something, yeah. God's Word is truth. There's no strategy against God's none, Word. None, none. There's no reason. Who can say it? Listen, Come on here. And so, but, but again, what Satan does is with this spirit that he brings into the world, it, if he can get us like he did Eve to listen, that's right. He can draw us away. He can promise us something. He's saying, but you have. I have to be very cautious that we understand that whenever Satan or someone is saying something against the word of God, I'm going to let God be true. That's right. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't put my trust in you. Now, I, I don't want to hear what God has to say. But now, when I need him, I'm going to call on him. <laughs> and, and that's the problem because if you can't trust him there. Yeah. It's going to be an issue you trust yeah. in here. And so it will erode your faith and my faith. we got to believe God is true. Yeah, we got to believe, we got to believe the word of God is true. Because your faith will never be strong until you settle the issue. God is right. Yeah. Amen. God's word is true. I don't Glory care what nobody says. See, and your faith will never be strong. Satan will always cause you and me to doubt. If we can't believe this part of his word, then what make you think the other part? That's right. All right? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That's good. So again, Adam and Eve, prior to the fall, operated in the law of the spirit of life. Romans 8 and 2 said, For the law of life, but the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free, free. from the law of sin and death. See, it, what, whichever law you operate in frees you from the other. Free. So if you operate in the law of life, it frees you from the law of sin and death. It frees uh, <laughs> Satan from dominating your life yeah, with sin. Come on here. But now if you don't go over there to that other law, it frees you from hearing God. You can't live like you're supposed to live. And so God has to help us. Now, I want you to understand something. It's not that when we get saved, we get born again that we become all righteous. That's God right. declares us as righteous. Glory. I stand with there's no condemnation because, see, we're not under the law. But the moment you try to live by what you're doing, and this is what make me right, well, at yeah. least I'm living right. Yeah. I'm living. Listen to me. Whatever you're doing is by that law of grace and God you were saved by. And so, therefore, if we miss it, that's why we can come back. God has declared you righteous. And God deals with you and I like you're right. Mm -hmm. But sin has repercussions. And we need to understand it. Sin will weaken your faith. Praise God. Sin will deal with your conscience so you don't have confidence in God. This is the confidence we have in Him. Come on here. And if I know I ain't living right, how can I have confidence when I come to God? I have none. It's kind of like when you're a small child. If you if you know you're going to do something wrong, you be avoiding your parents. <laughs> I'm just saying. You try to stay away from them. Praise God. And so Because your conscience is already dealing with you, you know. And you want it to say no. I've heard people come back and say, you know, I, I came in the church and I did wrong. It was like everybody in the church knew I did wrong. Nobody knew it. But your conscience will wear you out. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody looking the wrong way or says something. But it, I'm just telling you. So we have no confidence. Praise God. And so we need to understand how this thing works, how the devil does it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Satan questioned the word of God and then called God a liar. Yeah. Wow. 
He questioned the word of God. He called God a liar. Man, that's when we should have been bagging up. Brother. Let me get up out of here. Pray God. You know, I ain't no good in here. You going to call God a liar? No, I'm sorry. And so, but again, Eve stayed right there. Eve being deceived and Adam fully aware, disobeyed the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Remember the question that Jesus asked Peter. Wherefore? When did you do this? When did you come to this conclusion? What made you change your mind? You see, because he's asking, wherefore? Because now his faith is little. And so all he had to do was keep his focus on what Jesus said. He said, said, he said right. come. He said, come. Pray. come. Because when God gives you a word and you obey that word, then God is responsible. Yes. Praise God. Come on here. Now, when you go contrary to God's <laughs> word, then you are responsible. <laughs> all right. Praise God. That's good. So now, D. And we're under 3D. The law of life no longer being in effect, it's reciprocal sin and death begin to operate in their lives. It took effect when? Immediately. immediately. Praise God. You, see, these reciprocal, soon you change one to the other, immediately. See? See, and that's what we need to understand. So when I make a decision to sin, see, sin started working right away. That's why I need to repent right away. Because it... I can hang out there two or three days, and I don't know what devil is sitting up. Wait. You see, you understand what I'm saying? And the Holy Spirit is saying, go on and repent. You, you know that's not right. So let's stop giving the devils a numerous amount of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. God's not shocked that we didn't get it right. Come on here. Yeah. But if we'll confess that he's faithful and just to forgive us, and then he will cleanse yeah. us. Well, because, see, here's what you need to know. On our best effort, we can never live holy that's right. and right. But now when we come to God and we confess it, and we and God has declared me right. I said, Lord, it's in your hand. I'm going to do my very best. I got to cooperate with you and work with you. But you're the one who is my deliverer. Mm -hmm. You're the one who will bring me out of this. You're the one who will cause me to walk like this. Those of us who are walking a much better life than we did when we got saved, listen to me. It wasn't our effort. I promise you. Sure right. It was the Holy Ghost. Amen. But we had to cooperate with him. And that's why God doesn't get all flipped out when you messed up. You know what? God knows, man. He, he knows. But what God would do through the Holy Ghost has come is try to get you and I to come to him so he can. God said, just come to me. Confess it. I'm faithful and just to cleanse you of all. See, I, I want to help you in that area. We think I can make myself do it. That's right. We should have learned by now. Time, we're going to get it all right. Look, we still be struggling. See? That, and, and we allow that old nature to come back and, and that's why we're not under that law. Because the law, when the law, when you broke one of it, you broke the whole law. Yeah. And so, the, all it did is frustrate us. You know, because we could never do it. So God, he said, here's what him do. If, if you mess up, just come to me. That's right. Now, all I want you to do is ask me and know that I said that the law of life in Christ Jesus will make you free. free. Then Glory. I will free you from Hallelujah. that. I will deliver Hallelujah. you from that. I won't let that stay. Yeah. Don't run from me. Run to me. That's praise true. God. Tell me, and I'm going to help you. Praise God. We'll get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's going to be very, very important. Praise God. Now, number four. Under the law of sin and death, the blessing once enjoyed ceased. And curses replaced him. Mm -hmm. The earth with her fruit, that changed. Prosperity was replaced with poverty. Wow. Help was infused with sickness. Success was replaced with failure. Victory was lost in defeat. Peace left and worry appeared. And faith disappeared and fear showed up. Whee. Now, so, see, now could they operate in the... That law of sin and death, it has fear in it. It has death in it. Mm -hmm. You understand? It has failure in it. It has poverty in it. Because these are all the curses of that law. And so what you need to understand is that when all this stuff is happening, Satan is trying to hold you under that law. You and I need to go back and examine. And we said, now, wait a minute now. Lord, I just come to you. Praise God. And I thank you. Under the law of life in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Cool. That, that has life and it has blessing and prosperity yes. in it. Health and healing and Hallelujah. deliverance. Praise God. So that's why I, I don't want to be playing in both fields. That's right. Because if, if soon as I get over here, immediately that thing just started working something. Mm -hmm. And Satan might be setting me up. He's setting a snare for me. He's setting a trap for me. I made one decision, but that might have been the decision going to take me two years to get it straight again. My, my, my. So that's why we don't play with sin. We, we don't get out there because Satan is constantly trying to set you and I up. Eve didn't know that that little conversation was having. We're going to change a whole planet. Going to change the earth. Going to change the environment. Going to change the ground. 
going to change the weather. Going to change all of those things because mm -hmm. sin erodes. This earth now is unraveling itself because sin now is having its effect upon it. So it's going to be very important. You and I do not play with sin. That's right. All right. Praise God. Let's continue. So Jesus died and paid the penalty for our sins. Roman number five. Jesus died and paid the penalty for our sins. Upon his resurrection, the spirit of life will restore in Christ Jesus. That's why you have to be born again. That's why you have to come to Jesus. Don't let the world try me. You know, so you're saying y'all the only one can go to heaven. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Jesus said that. You know, the Son of God said that. Amen. He said, I am the doer. I am the way. I, I'm not going to be ashamed of that. You, sometimes I've seen uh, 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 preachers on and they dancing around it. You know, listen, and they're just dancing around it. Look, Jesus said it. Amen. I believe it. Praise God. Why? Because he was the one who paid the price. This life, this law works in Christ Jesus. You must be in Christ Jesus. Not going to church, not being religious. Some of the young folk that say, well, very spiritual. You, that spirit better be in Christ. That's all I'm saying. You better be born again. Because that spirit, you may be spiritual, but it might be the wrong spirit. All right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Let's continue. So, initially God used the tabernacle in the wilderness, its ceremonies and laws, to give a temporary solution to the curse. So, even then, under that, we find we didn't just have, couldn't approach God anyway. The law showed that. Amen. They had to come in there. They had to come by that sacrifice. Amen. They had a sacrifice had to be made. They had to come and wash. Then they had to come into the temple, the, the prayer, and he was in the holies of holies. It, you just couldn't run up on God. He's holy. <laughs> Praise God. You just couldn't. They, they run through it. You be dead. You know what I'm saying? You are going to listen. You are going to say, he's a holy God. Yeah. He's always holy. Hallelujah. And, and God had to create me by he could be in their midst. So that, And then he gave them certain things. Don't do this. Don't do this because you're breaking certain law and you keep doing this, duplicating these things. It wasn't God was trying to restrict them. God was telling them what would destroy them. That's right. It, whether he told them or not, they still were dying. And so he wanted to help them. Praise God. Now, let's continue. But Jesus became a curse for us. Come on. Galatians 3.13 said, Christ has redeemed us oh. from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For me. For Hallelujah. it is written, the curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Mm -mm -mm. Now, the reciprocal of the curse was initiated for those who believe on Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior. See, the curse is out there. But when we come into Christ Jesus, what Jesus did pays for us and it releases us from the curse. That's so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Roman number six now. Let's look at some example of operating in fear. Underlying poverty mentality. Underlying sickness mentality. Mm -hmm. Underlying failure mentality. I don't mean by that because you feel you're always going to be part, but you're working under a law. And that law has poverty attached to it. When we become a believer, God said poverty is not that. I didn't say everybody's going to be a millionaire or a billionaire. That's right. But he promised that he would meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And so we need to understand that somehow we begin to try to work this thing. Oh, I don't know this. Somebody holding me back. You can't get nothing done. Stop talking, number one. You're talking dead. You're talking under the law of the curse. Stop talking mm -hmm. that. Say what God says about it. The blessing of the Lord make it rich. Come on. He adds yeah, no, no sorrow. sorrow to it. Praise God. Lord. Amen. And so understand the laws of faith so you and I can operate in those laws and then that law will work for us. Praise mm -hmm. God. All right. Roman number seven. What's the answer? Choose faith and not fear. Under A, the term fear not is used 63 times in the King James. God wouldn't tell us to do something that we can't do. He said, fear not, fear not. And there, God was saying, fear not, and, and I know y'all can't help you. <laughs> you know, if he's saying fear not, he's saying you don't have to fear. That's right. Praise God. Don't get into fear. Stop that. It'll take you to the wrong place. Amen. It's the reciprocal of faith. David said, I will fear no evil. No evil. Psalm 23, 4. Amen. This man wasn't born again. No, but he said, it. I'm not going to fear any evil. None of it. I know the Lord is with me. Yeah, praise yeah, God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So praise God. That's <laughs> you and I decision. We have to make a decision today. Now, David went ignorant. He took all precautions. He did everything that he yeah. knew he needed to do. But he said, listen, I'm going to do my part. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I know to do right. I'm not walking out in front of any cherries going 100 miles an hour. Right. 30 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. That's my part. Praise God. I'm not going to put myself in dangerous situations. I'm right. going to do it. That's my part. The Bible said, Jesus said, you shouldn't, don't tempt the Lord your God. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he said, all that I can't do or whatever, 
Listen, I'm not going to fear evil. I'm going to trust God. No evil. I'm going to trust the Lord God. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to trust God to do his part. Isn't that all right? Yes, sir. And then Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Yes, come on. Neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. Praise God. Jesus yes. said that. Let me, and so it's a choice of the will. That is so good. It's a choice. See, we have to fight fear. It's going to fear will present itself to you and me. And I'm telling you, that's why we got to know the word. Because when fear comes, it's going to be telling us something. Then we need to quote the word right back to it and get that word back on. See, it's going to come. It's trying to arrest us. It's trying to get us scared and so that we'll start a sinking. And so we have got to keep saying what Jesus said. Jesus mm -hmm. said, come. Jesus come. said, come. Pray God. This is what, no, no, Jesus said, come. And sometimes, I can tell you, you have to fight that devil all day with that word. <laughs> come on in. And sometimes it will be two or three days. But if you hang on to the word, pray God, you'll keep saying it. <laughs> Amen. Faith come by hearing yes, and hearing and That's hearing good. and That's hearing good. the word of God. That Amen. So, good. so we, we So that, it doesn't mean, don't let the devil be a well, You ain't got to faith. Look at you. scared. No, no, no. Look, I'm going to keep putting the word out there. That's right. I, I, faith is presenting itself. I, and that spirit, you can sense it. Pray, and it's trying to get a hold of you and me. It's trying to get your thoughts. And so get the word in. Now, if you don't know the word, where's my Bible? Oh, I wish I had my Bible. You better get that word in you. Yes, Amen. So you can fight it. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number eight. Just like fear, faith is our conviction or belief in a reality that we can't yet see. The only difference is that faith assumes God will come through for you and fear assumes he won't. Whee! See, so so when I'm fearing, I'm fearing because of something that might happen. So I have faith in and I have a conviction that something's going to happen. It can happen. Praise God. And so it rattles me. Amen. And again, I told you the other time about last time about when we were riding through the mountains. And, and, they were, and so in order to fight that fear, because otherwise you want to get out. You know what I'm saying? It's, you want to immediately get your mind has just become. I'm constantly quoting the word, constantly praying the word, constantly doing that, and that kept my emotion in check. That is so good. Amen. Please understand, check because it. it was going to be at least an hour, over an hour, hour and a half to get through those mountains. Listen, five minutes in fear can cause you to do some crazy stuff. Yes, sir. So that's why you have to know the word, and you begin to keep that word to control your emotion. Praise God. And so that's going to be very, very key to you and me finding out and knowing those things. So choosing faith or fear means choosing who you will believe. My. As Christians, we realize we are afraid. I'm sorry. When we realize we're afraid, we must stop and ask ourselves an important question. Do you believe God or do you believe Satan? That's good. See, that's when we have to make a conscious choice to believe God's word over our own feeling. Mm -hmm. If we don't, these little lines of destruction will slowly erode our faith and fill our mind with fear. We have to make a conscious decision that I'm going to believe God. I know I feel dang, I know I feel like this, but I got to take God's word so then I can control that feeling. Otherwise, mm -hmm. this feeling is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. When we choose faith or fear in all reality. We are ultimately choosing who we will believe. That's good. Finally, nine. Without faith, it is impossible, impossible. to please God. That's what Hebrews 11 and 6 says. Now, God, to God, what, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Mm -hmm. Romans 14 and 23. And finally, remember the acronym for fear. False evidence appearing real. Wee. All right. Praise God. That's all I got for you tonight. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Now you need to go back over that lesson and look at it again. Praise God. And uh, maybe listen to this teaching again. And uh, praise God so God can fill your heart and my heart with faith. Now, I want to. Did you answer? I, mean, you know, I, I was going to just end with that scripture in Genesis that I quote so often. Genesis 18, 14. Mm hmm. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Praise God. And tonight, that's what I want to say to all of us, including myself. Is there anything too hard for our God? Amen. And we know that the answer to that is absolutely not. Praise God. Amen. Again, you have to feel your heart and mind. Yes. Sometimes the enemy going to attack you at night when you go to bed. And if you don't have the word in you, you know what I'm saying? 
then you've got to get up and find your Bible. You've got to do that. But if you know the word, you can lay right there mm -hmm. and begin to quote that word back. Yes. You're answering him just like Jesus said. It is written. written. It Hallelujah. is written. It, oh. And you keep saying it, it is written. You don't have to change because that word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Come on. Amen. You you put the put your sword on it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to speak to those of you who maybe you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And in this time we're living in right now, praise God, fear is rampant. Yes. Please understand that. And so, we, listen, Jesus died so you could have the law of life that's in Christ Jesus. God wants you to have life, praise God, that law of life. And in order to do that, you must be born again. You must believe that Jesus died on that cross, mm -mm -mm. paid the full price for all of your sin, praise God. And God placed on him the wrath that should have came on you and me. Praise God. And so if we would just accept Jesus, accept God's free gift through Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then we come into the family of God. Yes. We enter into the life of that that's in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So now I want to just pray for you. Uh, and uh, maybe you've backslidden and it's time for you to come back home. I just yes. want to pray for you. Come on here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. For everyone under the sound of my voice who never made Jesus the Lord of their life, that this would be the night that they would accept him yes, and you. make him Lord and Savior of their life. That you would change their life forever, mm. starting tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray the Holy Spirit come now and that you would confirm to them Hallelujah. that you want them in the kingdom. You confirm to them about Jesus. You would confirm to them tonight if they would make Jesus the Lord of their life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Now, I want to lead you in a prayer tonight. And uh, if you would, repeat after me, and we can re settle this issue tonight. You can come into the king, get a new birthday tonight. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, repeat after me. Father, I am sorry for my oh, sin. Jesus. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on that cross mm -hmm. and paid the full price, full price. for all of my sin. I believe that if I asked him, come on, to come into my heart and change my life, that he will do it tonight. He will do it today. Whenever I'm hearing this, yes. he'll do it right now. Glory. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. I want you as my Lord and my Savior. So I ask you to come in my heart right now, and I thank you that you're doing it. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in your minute, Glory to God. then God take you up on your word. Praise <laughs> God. This very time you are born again, Amen. and you become a believer in Christ. Now, praise God, you're going to need some help, and we want to send you some things. We want to help you get on the right track and get started right now, all right? Now, you need to tell somebody. That you accepted Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Yes, All right, Sister Henderson is going to help you. Know. Praise God. Oh, come on, Lord. Bless God. Hallelujah. There's some folks giving their life to the Lord. Yes, today. praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of those that have slid out and slid back in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. Glory to God. Praise God. We're so honored, so grateful to be able to give the opportunity mm -hmm. for people to come to know Jesus because that's Amen. the only answer in what everything is that's going on. Praise God. The only answer is Jesus. Amen. Area code of 414-873-8687. Uh, we will be just delighted if you would uh, call our ministry office and uh, we will return a call to you the tomorrow when we are back in the office. Mm -hmm. We want to get some material into your hand to yes. help you on this Praise walk God. and in this journey. Mm -hmm. And again, that is area code of 414 mm -hmm. 8 Seven three mm -hmm. eight six eight seven. Praise God. Also, you can send us over an email mm -hmm. at info i n f o at Berin Family Worship Center dot org. Praise and God. And again, we are just delighted. Amen. And we want to share uh, the good news of the gospel with you, and mm -hmm. so we want to give you some material. And I did say we want to give you. Some material. Praise we don't want anything from you, but mm -hmm. we want to place something in your hands to help you on this journey. Praise God. And as my husband said, go and tell somebody. Amen. If you got some good, anything we get good, we go tell somebody Absolutely. else about it. Amen. Absolutely. Praise God. Amen.
So God bless you tonight. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I want to also just remind uh, those of you that are uh, on the live stream tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise come on. God. Get on up. Get your shoes on. Mm -hmm. And come on. We at 5 a.m. prayer. Mm -hmm. And we'll be praying for what is labeled our first responders. Mm -hmm. And so that is folks that is on the front line. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do less talking. And more praying Praise Amen. God. day and night, Amen. praying without season. So Amen. you're invited to that as well. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, again, 5 a.m., going to be praying for our civil government, our church government, as well as some of the different partner ministries that Amen. is a part of us. Praise God. Amen. You are invited to come and be a part of that 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, anything else? Nothing, but we're going to see him again Sunday morning. All right. We'll see you. Right here. Praise 10 God. 10 a.m. Amen. Live stream. Live stream. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, thank each of you. We're so glad, praise God, that you're participating in yes, this. Yes, thank you. Lord. Pray you're downloading those notes now, and praise God, you can use those, and amen. You can even share those with someone else who may need this. So, amen. Well, let's pray. And this means, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, for your word tonight, thank you, Holy Spirit, that uh, I've given what I believe you gave me, but I know you will custom fit this word yes, for every will, one of us. Praise God. And Father, fear is something that will attack all of us. Praise yes. God in the name of Jesus. But thank you that you're teaching us in this series how we ought to uh, fight this, how we can win this war. And praise God, stay in faith in the mighty name of Jesus. So we bless you tonight. You, Write this word upon our hearts now. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Appreciate you. Praise God. Have a God. safe evening. God bless. God bless. Hallelujah.